Welcome to this tutorial on using the tone function. Now the reason that I'm doing this tutorial is I've actually got to use one of these little uh, piezo speakers. I'm just going to swap the screen over so that you can see a bigger picture of that. So there you have a piezo speaker. Terrible things really. Poor sound quality. You'll notice they've got a plus and obviously the other leg is the minus so when you're connecting this up into your circuit the positive pin goes to the digital pin that we will declare the other leg goes to ground so uh, that's the um, the way that you wire those up there's two functions that we use uh, there's one function that is called tone that actually starts the sound and the other function is called no tone which we can use to stop the sound now why would you use one of these because I'm you know the sound is awful from them I'm using one because I'm in the middle of building a machine that fills bags with powder um, it's a plaster filling machine and for the operator sometimes he gets a bit distracted so all this I'm doing is that I'm going to use one of these speakers to play a tone when the bag is full so he knows to put the next bag on so that's about all it's useful for there are some people who seem to have been able to make some quite nice tunes out of these things and you don't have to use this type of speaker with the tone function you can connect a normal speaker and I have tried one myself although the quality wasn't much better. Uh, the reason for using this tiny type of speaker is one it fits in a nice enclosure in the machine and uh, they're cheap and it'll survive the dirt. Anyway let's get on to some code and we'll see how all of this works. So got the IDE open and uh, we're just going to look at the basics of using tone and no tone. Now although I'm using it with a speaker there are other uses. There are some people who use these tones to do other things in electronic circuits. Uh, I'm not going there. I'm just going to stick to the a very simple system today. The circuit that we're going to use, the speaker plus pin goes to pin 8 and then the speaker negative goes to ground little technical thing for you the maximum freak the minimum frequency sorry that this will run at is 31 Hertz now that means it will cycle on and off 31 times a second the maximum frequency is 65,535 now that is why when we store lower down the values they need to be in an unsigned integer because of course a normal int will only store a value up to 32,767 so it wouldn't be able to store the full range of values however despite that maximum value being 65,535 realistically the, mo the maximum usable frequency with a speaker is around the 10,000 mark as you'll see in a minute so I've declared my tone pin that is the digital pin that we're going to be using to control this I've created an unsigned integer uh, my low tone which is going to be the minimum value and then I've set my high tone and I've only set it to 10,000 because when you start to set it any higher the poor little speaker goes a little bit bonkers then in the sketch uh, at this point we're only going to use the setup there's no need to have any code in the main loop all it's going to do is play the low tone and the high tone so obviously I've put my usual serial print in so I know what's going on and here we have how the basic of the tone function works so we call tone we then tell it the pin that we're going to use tone on and then I send it my frequency so my first frequency is going to be the low tone 31 we're going to wait for two seconds put a 2000 millisecond delay in and then we're going to use the function no tone and no tone basically says send a signal to the tone pin and tell it to stop and thank goodness for that because the noise can be horrible with these things 
Then what I'm going to do is delay for one second and then I'm going to send the high tone and once again turn it off. So here we go. So I hope you are able to hear that terrible noise. It's basically the low tone and the high tone. You'll notice the low tone is so low that you can actually almost hear the individual cycles going through. The high tone, because it's so high, the volume's not particularly great on it. So that is the basic of using tone and no tone. Now what I've done is a little bit lower down in the main loop. I've then created another little function that I'm going to uncomment and I'll upload and we'll play that next. OK, so I've uncommented the block and I've uploaded and as you can see there are a set of numbers going up on my serial monitor. I'll be honest with you, I've unplugged the speaker at the moment because the sound was driving me bonkers. So exactly the same script as before, so we've got the initial setup where we're going to play the two tones and then in the main loop I've got an integer Q and I've got a for loop here so starting at the minimum value of 31 going up to a value of 10,000 and this little oddity here I've just put a little note here normally you would see something like Q plus plus but if here I put Q plus equals 100 so it's going up in steps of 100 rather than incrementing by one because that is a long way to go one tone at a time and I don't want to listen to it. So what it does this time uh, the way we use the tone function is slightly different. So before when we created a tone we selected our tone pin and then we gave it the frequency that we wanted it to play at. You'll notice this time we select the tone pin Q is the frequency that I'm using from the for loop and then you'll notice now I've got a number afterwards 100 and that is the number of milliseconds I want the tone to play for. So before when we created a tone it just kept playing that tone until we selected no tone and told it to turn it off. This time you'll notice that there is no no tone uh, command the function's not used and the tone will play for 0.1 of a second and then I've put a delay in for 0.2 of a second so that we can clearly hear that the tone stops and in the serial print I'm also printing out the um, the value of Q and the reason I created this little script was I wanted a tone that the operator of my machine could hear and that wouldn't drive him completely bonkers. So this was my way of sort of going through the numbers and hearing the sound. So what I'm going to do now, turn your speakers up a bit, I'm going to stick my um, microphone down next to the um, speaker and I'll restart the COM port and hopefully you'll hear it all start to work through. I think that's quite enough of that noise um, but I hope you got the picture and if you want to sit and run the whole script you can go all the way up to 10,000. Now what I'm now going to do is just show you a second script although we've now covered the main functions I just want to show you a particular feature of using tone that might be helpful so I'm going to bring up the second sketch. So this second sketch is just a little example of how to start to integrate uh, this code with other items. Very often uh, beginners have problems linking two sketches together. One interferes with the other. And what we're going to do is use a millis timer. Now I have done a lesson on this and uh, it's in the top of the sketch. Um, there's a website address about how to use a millis timer. 
So this sketch is a little bit simpler in that we've just got the tone pin. The difference this time is I've also declared an LED pin. And for that one, I have to use a pin mode to declare it as an output. Now, the LED pin is pin 13, which if you're using an Uno or um, a Mega, is the, the built-in LED. So you haven't got to build any extra circuitry. I've got two unsigned longs. One is for the LED timer, one is for the sound timer. And I've got an integer called the LED state. And you'll see how all of this works. The reason I wanted to show this was to show that you can run a set of, if you like, a flashing LED and the sound playing but not in sync with each other. So this first loop, all it's doing is this has got the sound timer. So the sound timer waits until the number of milliseconds that's gone by is greater than the sound timer. When it is, it adds a thousand milliseconds. So basically, this if function will run every one second. And when it runs, it uh, fire, triggers the tone on the tone pin. You notice I've just put a number in for the frequency because it's not going to be changing. I want 500 and it's going to go for 800 milliseconds. So it's a tone of 500 hertz for 0 0.8 of a second. And that will loop around on its own. At the same time, I want the LED to be flashing. But I don't want the sound to be interfering with the LED. So what's going on here is that I've got a second timer, the LED timer, and that one is going to function every uh, 200 milliseconds, every 0.2 of a second. And all it will do, it's almost the equivalent of the blink sketch. It remembers, it looks at the LED state and whatever the state was, it changes it to the opposite state. So it's going low, high, low, high, and it's going to flash the LED on and off. Now, I'm not going to play this sketch for you because all you will hear is a beep 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 and you don't really need to see an LED flashing but I've put the sketch on the example page on the Digital Town website just as an example of how you would integrate something where you can have the sounds playing but it's not interfering with your LEDs flashing obviously if we used a delay in here the sound timer would interfere with the LED timer unless you were going to come up with some very clever numbers. So this is a normal way that you would run two different functions together if you don't want them to be linked together. So I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, so we've looked at just about everything there is to do with tone. We've seen the maximum and minimum values. We've heard all the annoying beeps. We've seen how to start a tone and then how to stop that tone using no tone. And we've also seen with tone how you can run that tone function for a limited period of time. So I hope that's been useful for you. And uh, if it has, please click the like and subscribe button. Bye for now.